1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction, destruction come upon them. As a travail come upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Greetings, Judy. DFG Gideon's flight. Hey guys, I thought I would share that particular verse of uh, scripture as a lead into um, a couple of topics that I want to share with you uh, on this day. Uh, first, let me also say that I'm not feeling very well today, uh, having what I think is a sinus infection that, that's causing some other, you know, issues, not major issues, praise Yah, because, you know, by His grace, I'm healthy, you know, as, as I can possibly be. Uh, in this stage of my life, even probably healthier than probably most. But still a little irritable, throat-wise, puffiness, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to let that get in the way of me doing the Yah's will today. Amen? So that being said, um, I, 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 I share this particular verse of Scripture with you, and I have a couple of other things I want to share with you. We're going to go back, and uh, we're going to visit uh, Cain and Abel. Uh, and, and really talk in terms of what transpired between the two brothers and how uh, their conflict is very similar to the conflict that we as a people are dealing with today. I'm talking about internally. You know, Judah not trusting and understanding, you know, where our priorities are to be, you know, in these last and evil days. Now let's go back, you know, to uh, 1 Thessalonians first, 5 and 3. It says again, for they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. In essence, labor pains. You mothers out there, you guys probably know very well what I'm talking about. You know, when that labor pain hits you, you know, what, what the world knows is when that, you know, when you're, you know, in the final moments when you realize, oh, shit, <laughs> he's or she is about to come. That particular pain, where that, where that, that. It's so strong that you probably feel like, you know, debt is knocking on your door. Now, I think I'm getting that close to right. Of course, I don't know your pain. <laughs> I've never been there. But according to the book, you know, it, it, it feels like a particular destruction that's happening, you know, to your body at that particular time. This is what Yah is, is, is warning us. This is why Paul wrote this to the church at Thessalonica, the people, the believers, the, the Israelites there, to let them know that, you know, they don't have to uh, be um, overly concerned about, you know, if they're going to catch them or, or whether, I'm sorry, whether they were in that time. He says, when it comes, you're going to know it's going to come. It's not going to be, you know, some little slow walk, inch by inch. You know, uh, somebody will tell me this and somebody will tell me that. And, you know, then I'll get a chance to do this and I'll get a chance to do that. And, you know, I, I, you know, I still got time. He says, that's not the way it's going to happen. Yah says that, that, that when this destruction come upon this earth, upon the wicked on this earth, it's going to catch them by surprise. I'm talking about the suddenness of it. They're going to understand they're wicked. There's not a man or woman out here who's doing wickedly and don't understand what they're doing. Don't, 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 don't get that twisted, as they say. You know, now, granted, Satan takes up on many faces. And he'll come to you as a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, I'm only concerned. I only care. I just want to know. Just tell me the truth. You know, all of those are his tactics because he's trying to uh, entice you. And when, when he comes that way, you have to use wisdom and ask Yah for the rahuk of discernment so you can see right through the cunningness and hit their ass right between the eyes with the word of, of Elohim. And then at the same time, be strong enough to resist the devil. Amen? You know, you've heard me talk about my daughter Nina from time to time. Whenever she doesn't want to be bothered, she turns that little head. That's a signal that, you know, as I was saying, you're talking to the hand. And we have to be strong enough. If we're falling for every trap of Satan, that means we're still babes in our walk before Elohim. Amen? And, and at this stage... You know, in most of our lives, we should be meat eaters. In other words, we should be strong enough to at least be conscious of the tricks of the devil and also aware of the times that we're in. And let me give you a couple of examples. If you don't think that this is the end, right now, 
the United States' greatest competitor, weapon weapon wise, United States' greatest competitor, weapon of war wise, is the Kingdom of Russia. And I'm going to say the Kingdom for a reason: the Kingdom of Russia. And just today, and you can go look at you can you can Google it up. You know, Russia, by direction of their president, Putin, has them building two, what he calls, doomsday planes, or aircraft. Two of them. And you may say, well, DFG, what is a, what is a doomsday aircraft? Well, a doomsday aircraft is a command center that countries that are wealthy enough to be able to afford it, <laughs> you know, all have the technology to be able to, to build it, is where they literally have a command station that flies above the earth. In other words, it flies in the heavens. Not, not you know, not where Elohim is, not the third heaven, but the sky is what we call that, or so-called space, as they want to mislead you in saying. You know, when they talked about Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and um, Richard... Um, Branson, I think is his name, going into space. Guys, when they say space, they're talking about, I don't know, I'm going to give them a little liberty, maybe 25, 30 miles in the air. Maybe that high. I said 25 or 30,000 miles in the air is what they want to call space. Because they would have you think when they say space, you think they're out there with the moons and the stars and they could see Whatever they lie to us, telling us that they could see, you know, with all of their uh, telescopes and, you know, that's their, their their space station and all of this shit. And I, excuse me for saying it that way, because I'm telling you, I'm going to say it to you again. Our books are as affirming it over the earth, affirming it. In other words, it's a, a shield, a ceiling over the earth. And it's only so far man can go. Now, of course, they know it's there. But they will never admit it because they would have to admit or they'd have to be willing to answer the question, who placed it there? So what they'll do is they'll tell you there's a Van Allen radiation belt. You follow me? That, that, that covers the earth to protect the earth. Again, the lie they tell. To keep meters and other things from coming to the earth. Again, the lie they tell. They'll tell you that it's 30 some odd uh, thousand miles in width. Again, the lies they tell. Yet they would want you to believe that somehow almost 50 years ago, a little bit over 50 years ago, in some aluminum foil piece of equipment that they were able to fly through 30 miles, 30,000 miles of radiation twice. <coughs> Going to the moon and back. And no one came down here full of radiation. All those pilots in that little small area you know, we're able to go through all that radiation and live to tell about it. And if you believe that, and I know many of you do because you're still indoctrinated through your science books, you know, through your through your college education, your, your you know, your, 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 you know, I don't know, whatever. I don't have to go through all of that deep dive, but, but, but you want to, to, to appear to us smart. So you want to impress your friends. Your parents, let them know that education that they paid for paid off. But in all that education, you profess to be wise, but guess what? You're still being made a fool of, respectfully saying. I'm an educated man myself, and even I was made a fool of until I came to the book. And then I found out the truth. And now that I have that truth, I won't let that truth go for anything. Amen. What our book tells us, Solomon said, buy the truth and sell it not. And what do you mean by buy it means otherwise do whatever it takes to get it and don't release it. But that being said, you know, this whole space odyssey story that they want to tell you guys, look, I'm telling you, okay, if you're a believer, then you can't accept those lies. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't believe in science because we believe it, because science is molecules, science is atoms, right? Science science is 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 Creation is a part of science. But this science does not supersede creation. It does not supersede Elohim's wisdom. What he was able to make with his very words. 
Only the enemy of, enemy of man would, 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 would tell those kind of lies. And only those who are susceptible, you know, to, 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 I don't know, to, 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 to listening to the deceivers would buy it and teach it. Again, 30,000 miles of radiation. And they want you to believe that not only were they able to fly through that twice, but now when you ask about it, why haven't we gone again? They tell you two things. First, they say, we lost all of that technology. Somehow or another, that technology was misplaced. And not only did they misplace all of that technology, all that information, they don't have now the ability to do it again. So the most important event in the history of mankind, they lost that technology. NASA lost that technology. That's the lie they want you to believe. And if you want to believe it, then, you know, again, I don't guess there's any harm in it to be, you know, I mean, you know, why can't you be deceived? Why, I mean, well, all of us can be deceived, but if you're willingly, you know, if you know the truth and you, you, you willingly reject the truth, then our book says there's no hope for you. So in, in essence, the, the book tells us don't don't even try to convince you. And we're not going to try to. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm talking to the people who believe the book. If you happen to be listening in, then that's a simple question I'll ask you to. Why are you buying that BS that they were able to do that? Without asking serious questions, how did they come up with material that could go through that much radiation and they don't have that kind of material right now? When they go into these nuclear plants and stuff, guys, or when that, that nuclear plant in, I think, what is that, Russia or whatever some years back, or uh, China or, or Japan, whatever. Man, think about how they, were, they responded to that. I mean, even at three, uh, that three mile out in New York. I mean, these people damn near lost their minds. And they were afraid. And, and many people came back deformed and children died, animals died, fish died, birds died from all that radiation. Yet yeah, they're going to tell you that three, three men went up there twice. One time going, one time coming back, and they had no radiation whatsoever to affect them. Again, I, you know, that's that for that. But anyway, when I talk about, you know, um, when they talk about space, guys, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about things inside of the dome, all right? And our book tells us there's a dome. There's a firmament between the heaven and the earth. He said there was water at the bottom. And then he said, again, water at the top. So that's what you want to understand in regards to, <laughs> I don't know how I got off on it. On this, I think I, well, I know why I got off on it because I was talking about the doomsday um, command centers that, that they're using, you know, that Russia is using, you know, a building so that they can pretty much escape what they call doomsday. Now, for you out there who are saying, I don't believe in the end of the world. I think that's just hearsay. I think those are just fear tactics. I just think that's these zealous, you know, crazy lunatic, you know, so-called Bible thumpers who making that up. Well, I don't know. Maybe you want to go talk to uh, Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin over there. Because he damn sure thinks it's, it's that, that, that a doomsday is coming. He seems to be rarely certain that it's coming. Fairly certain. I'm sorry. He's so certain he's building two of them. So that they can possibly escape what's soon to come on the earth. And that goes right back again to what uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3 says. It goes, let me read it to you again. But when they tell us peace and safety, getting back to normal. Then sudden destruction coming upon them. As travail upon a woman who is about to have a child. And they shall not escape. Period. So they think they're going to escape with their command centers and their spaceships and, you know, Bezos and all. I'm sure they're out there looking to see if there's something that they can attach themselves to. If there's somewhere that they can go planning their escape. But our books say they're not going to escape. They're not going anywhere. Or that well, <laughs> if I can correct that statement, they're going somewhere. Trust me, they're going somewhere. 
And Yah is going to show all of us before it's over with. See, he, 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 he has been very tolerant of these wicked demons, these, these, these men of power, these men in authority, and women. And remember, when I say men and women of authority, I'm not just talking about the, the elitists amongst us, the hidden ones that you don't know anything about. The powerful families are, 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 are entities that you know nothing about. When I say wickedness, remember, it's principalities. So there are high-level wickedness, and then there's the wickedness of the woman who calls you up every now and then and tells you that she loves you. Or the guy. So there's levels of this. Well, you have to understand, my sisters and my brothers, you have to understand that you, you right in this last and evil day, you need to pray for discernment. That Yah would open up your eyes and allow you to see the craftiness of Satan as he come to you in his many faces, in his many ways. Making you believe or trying to de de deceive you into believing that we got time. Don't believe this end is coming. You better plan for the future. I want 20 children. I want to find me a good husband. I will not tolerate anybody with my lover. All of this stuff. All of that stuff, they, they, that's, that's what they concern themselves with. Am I speaking ag against them for, 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 for having a, 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 a standard? Absolutely not. Am I speaking against them for, for, for saying, okay, this is for me and this is not for me? Let me be clear. Because I've had several of you little demons out there try to challenge me and, and put in my mouth words that I'd never said. When we talked about polygamy, what I said, that polygamy does not go against the word of Elohim. Any messenger that tells you something to the contrary is a lying messenger. That's a deceitful prophet, a prophetess. But the day you hear me tell you on one of these messages that DFG is looking for a bunch of wives, then you can call my hand on it. Until you hear me say that, then you don't know what the hell I'm thinking. So quit with your implying things. Okay. Sorry for that quick little public service announcement. But it needed to be said. Because I'm not going to fan the hand of the enemy. My destiny is wherever Elohim says my destiny is going to be. Whatever Elohim directs me to do, rest assured. All of you hears of my word. That's exactly what I am going to do. Simple as that. Whatever way he directs me, that's the way I'm going to go. And I know many of you are saying, well, I'll follow him only if it fits my purpose. In other words, I'll follow him if I agree with him. But if I don't agree with him, he can kiss my Hebrew Israelite ass. Oh, no, you didn't say it like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you didn't say it like that. You just thought it like that. But that's okay. Our book tells us that rebellion is like witchcraft. It says rebellion is as witchcraft. Go back and read. I want to say that's First Samuel, the incident with King Saul, when Saul decided to uh, decide what was acceptable for a sacrifice versus what was acceptable about obeying a commandment. And Samuel told him, to obey is better than any sacrifice you could ever do, Saul. And as a matter of fact, your disobedience your, is, is, is rebellious. Or your rebellion because you did not follow Yah's instruction is as the spirit of witchcraft or idolatry. So all of you idolaters out there, all you practice of the cult out there, there's a place for you. And if you're not sure, go back to Revelations chapter 22 and 14 and read it. Because you're outside of the gate. In other words, you're going to get left behind, cast away. For me and my house, you've heard me talk about it before. We're going to follow Elohim. And if there's anybody in my house that decides that they're going to go a different way, then they're going to be a cast away. I'm good with it long as they're good with it. Because I know the day will come, they'll regret what they said and regret what they did. 
I would never challenge the word of Elohim if I was any of you guys. That is pure insanity. You're going to challenge the creator who has the power to cast your ass in hell for eternity. The lake of fire. You're going to challenge that. You're going to challenge his word. You're going to take, you're going to, you're going to be arrogant enough to say, well, I don't agree that the, that the Israelites are black people, so-called. I don't agree that salvation is not for everybody. I'm, I, I, the other word is I, I, I. Why don't you get the book out? Why don't you study the book? Why don't you get the precepts in the book? Why don't you just go and let the book establish itself with witnesses all throughout the book? Because I is in your way. And I'm going to tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. I is going to destroy your soul. Your I is just like that firmament over the earth. It's going to keep you separated from Elohim. And see, when doomsday comes, you're going to be doomed. Not because Elohim didn't love you. Because he does love you. That's why he's giving you an opportunity to repent. That's why you're hearing these words that are coming out by many of your brothers and sisters of Israel. I'm talking about the true believer. I'm not talking about the, the two-third heathens out here teaching, teaching lies. Y'all know who some of them are, the Mike Malice. I'm not talking about them, the pastor dolls. I'm not talking about those liars, those who mix the truth with lies. I'm not talking about them. That's Saul. That's King Saul and his unrighteous, self-centered, evil spirit ass. Yeah, he was chosen by Yah, but then when Yah chose him, he decided to go his own way and start doing his own thing. And Yah judged his ass for it. He lost everything. Many of you are going to lose everything. Many of those false teachers out there who are building up all these camps and got these big giant ministries and got all these luxuries of the world and got all the material things you could ever have, they're going to lose it all. And if you were just to pull back a couple of layers and really look close and find out what's going on in these people's lives or go look at the path that they have blazed, you're going to find a lot of dead, innocent bystanders out there. These people have caused mayhem and destruction with their lives, in their lives. Just as Saul caused the people to be judged of Elohim. Because of his wickedness, he wanted to decide what was acceptable. Instead of letting the commandments of Elohim dictate to him what it was that he was supposed to do. Like so many of you are doing. Two thirds. Two out of three of you guys are doing what you want to do. Ladies, two or three of you who are calling yourself believers are doing exactly what you want to do and contrary to what Yah has told you to do. Brothers, one out of three of you are going to make it because you're being obedient to what Yah is telling you to do and not listening to all these other naysayers out there telling you what you what you're doing is outside of the will of Elohim as though they know the will of Elohim. But thank Yah for you, my brothers. Because you have studied and now you've got your mind right. You're single minded now. Because you understand, hey, let Yah word be true and let every other word be lying words. And it's because of men like you that women and children will be saved. Amen. You're the lot among us. You're the Noah among us. You're the Moses amongst us. And y'all, I think I thank y'all every day for you men. And for you sisters who are obeying and being obedient to that man of Elohim and following that man as he goes through the word of Elohim and he does his best to live by that word of Elohim, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you feel, for you sisters, Yah bless you. I pray that Yah will make you healthy, make your children healthy. I pray that Yah will put a shield of fire or a ring of fire around you so that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because you have the love of Elohim in your heart. And that's greater than any love that any man, any one man, any child, any mother, any father could ever give you. You are blessed amongst all women, I might add. You sisters who are in the word and who listen to that word and, and go against your own self nature, knowing that your selfishness could be the ruin of you and your family. Yah bless you.
because you have been the ultimate example of denying self for the greater good. Amen? So when we get back to this message right here, and then I'm going to go over to Cain and Abel. And excuse me, because you're going to see a lot of perspiration on your brother. Amen? Because first of all, it's probably 94 degrees, 95 degrees in the shade in this city. The humility in this city is humid as I don't know what. So you're probably talking about 105 degrees in the shade, <laughs> which is where I am, believe it or not. So, you know, but that's okay. Maybe this perspiring will get this, you know, whatever virus that's causing this situation would be. Maybe I'll be able to sweat it out. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, so try to ignore that as much as you can. I'm okay. I'm not having a heart attack. <laughs> I'm just hot as hell. Okay. But, um, but my conviction is strong. My purpose is single-minded. And I'm trying to encourage you sisters and you brothers. So again, no one needs to be getting offended here. You should be self-examining. Why don't you just examine yourself? Why don't you just self-examine? What's the point of being offended by the word of Elohim? If I'm giving it to you from the book, why are you offended? If I was sitting in some pulpit, you know, you know, telling you stories of grandeur, telling you about how valuable you are, and how blessed you're going to be with money and material, and how y'all going to find you a husband and find you a wife. You'd all be grinning, skinning, like you, how you say you'd be skinning and grinning. But I would be lying because that's not in the book. And that's what Paul must have meant when he said that, that there will be uh, members of our people who will give themselves over to seducing spirits. You know what a seducing spirit is? A, it's a spirit that tells you what it knows you want to hear because it's reading your mind. It listens to all of your conversations. It reads your mind and then it listens to what you say, text, or write. And then what it does, it feeds that. It feeds your appetite. And what you do, if you get stronger and stronger in believing a lie. Did not the book tell us that? I want to say, what is that? Was that uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5? He said, because they're, or 1 Timothy chapter 4, because they love not the truth that Ra gave them, Yahuwah gave them over to a, a, a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Because when they heard the truth, they rejected the truth. How many of you out here right now are rejecting the truth? Because it does not go along with what you believe. Not what the word says, what you personally believe. And then you're attacking the men and the women of Elohim and saying, no, that's their personal opinion. Well, how is our personal opinion when we're studying the book that you won't study? We're showing you where you can find it in the book and you won't research. And we're only saying what the Rahu tell us to say, which you refuse to hear. So how in all of your wisdom, so you're so intelligent, brother. You're so intelligent, sister, that all of this information that I, we're sharing with you, you, in all of your intelligence, say that we are going with our own opinion. Now, we've given you information, but you're lazy, and you're accusing us of being wicked because we're not. You're too lazy to discipline yourself to study. Because, and, and some of you, let me say this to you, and I'm not talking to everybody. Okay, and, and y'all, look, some of my brothers and sisters who are part of this channel, part of this family's channel, you know, I've said it to you many times, I appreciate you, and I'm so loyal to you that I'm sitting out here feeling bad and still coming to you with the word, because I know all of us need a word in these last and evil days. That's my commitment and my love for you. So I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about the ones who are listening in who want to attack the word and attack the, the, the messenger because they're not in agreement with the word, but they want to try to pretend like they're not in agreement with the messenger. But in truth, they're self-deceiving themselves because they're making it about the messenger when in all actuality, they're making it about the word. Because my challenge to you, if, that, if what I'm saying applies to you, my challenge to you then, if you don't agree with me, if you think I'm leaning to my own opinion or my own understanding, my challenge to you is get in the book 
And I want you to give me the, the precepts. I want you to go, go back and give me all of the information to challenge everything you hear me say. And don't go give me no one three, John 3 and 16 foolishness. You know, you'll tell me that y'all love the whole world, so he gave his only begotten son. But I can show you over and over, he says, Israel is the apple of his eye. My people. My people. I came to say the lost sheep. Well, lost sheep means he's looking for the lost. Obviously, the ones who aren't lost, he's not here for them. Are they not sheep too? No, we are a select group. Yah has called us out amongst the group, the one third of us I'm talking about. The one third who are not going to be part of this destruction to come, this doomsday event that is right. I don't even want to say it's right around the corner. Maybe a better way to say it is right above your head. It's in the air now. We're breathing it now. And unfortunately, we really are. These so-called, um, uh, to use the right words so that I don't trigger these, 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 these algorithms, these devil algorithms. How about we just call it the right word? See these uh, pestilence that are in the land? This new uh, variation of the pestilence that's in the land? See, all of that is judgment from Elohim. And see that new variation of the pestilence that's here? It's going to kill a lot of our people. Because as they say that they are targeting our people. They said it, not me. They said that our people are the target of the pestilence. So that's why they are making us the target of what man wants to do when he tries to play Elohim to bring about your soul salvation. See, so that's man trying to play Elohim. Elohim said this is judgment time. And they're telling you, no, it's peace and safety time. We just need to get back to normal. And many of you are buying into it because you're complying with them. Yah said pestilence was going to come in these last days. He said there will be famine, which is hunger, and pestilence on the land. These will be the signs of the end. Go back and read Matthew 24. He said there will be famine, famine, and pestilence. Famine is hunger. Lack of food, lack of resources. Throughout the whole land. Then he said there will be wars and rumors of wars. He said, when you see all these things happen, he said, know that the end is near, even at the very door. So again, instead of attacking, you know, your brothers and sisters for bringing you the truth, you should be on your knees thanking Yah that you're hearing the truth. That is finally being corrected. After all these years of your religion, your religious ide ideology, which is another word, in my opinion, idolatry. For all your religious ideology that you were brought up in, whether you came up in the Catholic Church, the non-denominational church, the Baptist Church, whatever one of these hell holes that you were in, these covens, these witches and warlocks who were teaching in those covens, who really didn't teach you anything, by the way. They taught you a bunch of lies. They gave you a bunch of warm, fuzzy stories. And every now and then, they would talk about hell. Used to. Not anymore. Because now they're politically correct and they're being paid by the governments of the world to make sure they don't use certain words that will cause you to change, cause you to repent. So now the religions don't want you repenting anymore. Religion just wants you to keep coming. They just want you to, to, to be loyal to their, their, to their ministries. And in your loyalty to their ministry, they're telling you that's the saving of your soul. Idolatry, your ideology, which is idolatry. And many of you, Yah has pulled out of there, are trying to pull you out of there. He's trying to grab you out of there. He's sipping you. You know, when, when Yah told Peter, he said, Peter, you know, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that in your day of weakness that you, do, that, you not, that, you, that you don't fail. See, many of us are bringing this truth to you because we don't want you to die. And go to hell because you were preconditioned, some of you when you were little children, to believe these lies. And you were raised in these lies. And now these lies are so deep in your heart, so deep in your soul, when you hear the truth, it just doesn't resonate because like you say, it's just not for you. But if y'all call it good, 
who are you to call it evil? Amen? And I'm talking about everything. And again, when I, that message I just said to you, that's not a, a condition-specific message. Again, see, I'm not, see, I got to fight Satan on both sides, unfortunately. See, I have to bring forth the truth, but I also have to have the, uh, the rahuk of discernment because I know some of them are listening, never heard anything I said, so they still stuck on polygamy and, my, and monogamy. With their little small little brains, that size. Little pea, that's the size of a pea. So their little pea brains can't get past that. I'm way past that. We said what we had to say about it. Those who had something to say. We brought forth the truth about it. Those of us who knew the truth. And now we're dusting our hands of it. What did y'all say? You bring them the truth. If they accept it, you go in. You keep teaching them. If they reject it, he said you dust the feet. Dust your feet at their door. Don't go in. Leave. I'm done with that. I don't have no more for you on that. So if you're sitting in there trying to cherry pick things I say because you still have an issue with that, then guess what? I, I, I feel sorry for you. Satan is going to sift your behind like wheat. And no, I will not pray for you. The word is enough for you. If you don't love this word enough to let that word set you free of your ignorance, of your preconditioning, your programming, your religious programming, your mother programming, your father programming, if that's more important to you than your soul, if their programming of you based off your church you're living is more important to you than the word of Elohim, then so be it. That's between you and him. But, but buyers beware. The wages of sin is death. And y'all made a comment. Do your whore. He said, y'all can forgive any sin. For some of you mothers, you know, who made the poor decision of boarding babies. And some of you who were in homosexuality and you came out. You know, some of you who are whoremongers, you're no longer whoremongers no more. Some of you who are adulterers, you're no longer adulterers anymore. Some of you who are doing a lot of folly things. Yah has given you the grace of mercy through, the, through your, your active verbal repentance and a true commitment to leave that life behind, to let that die. And Yah has been merciful and graceful to you. But Yah said, I can forgive all of those things. And he has, if you've truly repented. But he said, blasphemy, I will not forgive. He says, when you go against my word, I will be severely judging you. And so for all of you out there who want to just look at the word and say, I don't care what it says, then you might as well just go in on and be a heathen. You might as well just, just put that book down, burn it, do whatever you're going to do with it. You might as well go out there and eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow you are going to die. You have no more relationship with Elohim. Because you can't come before him with your filth. And he's saying when you blaspheme against him, he's not forgiving you. You heard what I said? When you blaspheme the word of Elohim, in other words, if it's written in this book and because it does not resonate with you or you're in disagreement with it because you're still caught in religion, self-righteousness, or whatever the hell it is that got your brain impregnated on lies, then Yah says he's done with you. Go your own way. He, this you can be assured of. You're not going by yourself if that makes you. I guess maybe that's my word of comfort for you. If I can give you any comfort or comforting words, don't you blasphemers. Those of you who says you don't care what the book says, you blasphemers. If I, let me give you a word of comfort. And let me know when you're ready. I want to comfort you with this, with this, with this uh, verse of scripture. Let me know when you're ready. I'm going to give you some comfort. You deserve some comfort too. He says, broad is the path and wide is the gate that lead it to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. So guess what? You're not alone. All right? So that's my word of comfort for you. you go, at least you're not going to hell by yourself. At least you're not going to burn by yourself. Now, if that's comforting for you, your children are not going to die, you know, by themselves. Y'all all die together. Okay? That, 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 at least I can comfort you with that truth. Okay? And that's in your book, by the way. All right? That's in your book. 
So I hope that 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 helps you out a little bit. But for the rest of us who say it doesn't matter what I think, what matters is what the word says to you. Let us continue on with this study. Amen. So anyway, Russia is building doomsday planes, sisters and brothers. There's famine coming. There's pestilence here. <coughs> I will be honest, guys, the very air that we're breathing is very dangerous. And unfortunately, probably intentionally set that way. There, there, are, there are rulers of the darkness of this world who are, who are determined. How many of you guys have heard of the Georgia milestones? I think I'm saying the Georgia, the Georgia milestones or millstones. But anyway, there's, there's these commandments that was written on this stone it's somewhere in Georgia. And one of the things in the stone is saying that they want to reduce the population of 500,000 people, a half a million people. Now, we got almost, what, 7.5 billion and counting on the earth right now on that particular stone and they don't seem to know who put it there but whoever put it there put it there for a reason y'all didn't put it there man put it there so whatever powers a man who put it there don't be surprised if they're going to do everything in their power to make it happen i'm talking about to get the population down to five hundred thousand. that's why they're pushing all these agendas okay that's why they're pushing you know all these non uh be fruitful and multiply agendas. Now, thank you, Elohim, because I'm glad that you, see, Elohim gave me the perfect way to say that. Because when, Yah, when Elohim told us to be fruitful and multiply, he was talking about, you know, bearing children. All right? And then with those children, we were supposed to have dominion of the earth. We were supposed to cultivate the earth. So we were supposed to multiply as a nation of people, and then we were supposed to, you know, build build. We're supposed to be builders. We're supposed to take this beautiful earth and bring about additional beauty to it. But that's not happening. So instead of us being fruitful and multiply, the rulers of the darkness of this world has set forth all these agendas to keep you from producing. To keep a man and a woman from procreating. Okay? So that's, that's what they're set about doing. And that's why a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, Lil Nas X with his latest video, you know, the one where he's in prison, you know, uh, now, you know, committing, you know, sodomy in prison with a bunch of other men. You know, we already talked about uh, Cardi and, 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 and Meg, you know, and all the serpents in that little mansion that they have over there, the sex kittens, you know, it was the women you know, slaves. And they've been told that these women have been told that it's their freedom, that that's the expression of freedom. Well, you might want to, you know, I don't advise to go and look at that filthy video. But if you can stomach it, go back and look at it through the eyes of critical thinking and look at things close. You'll see one of them got her hair in locks like chains, like, like you know, a chains, like a chain that you chain something up with. So that implies that, that she's a slave. That there are other forces greater than her that, that, that has her mind under control. And they're using mind control with her to get you mind controlled through watching and believing and, and embracing that lifestyle. I'm talking about the lifestyle of being a whore. The lifestyle of that you only need a man for his resources. Nothing else. The lifestyle that you know, it's not about reproduction. It's about, can I say this lightly? <laughs> I'm not going to say that word. It's a, it's, a, it's a lifestyle about having sex. Okay, I was going to use the other word, but that's not necessary. So, and all of those things, not, not sex to, repro, repro, rep, to procreate, sex to, to, to enrich themselves. All right? Not productive self, sex. Filthy, nasty, dirty sex garbage, vomit, throw up, that kind of sex. So you got the male over there, Nas, pushing it with the men, and you got the women over there, Cardi, Meg, and some of them others pushing it with the women over there. And it's all a part of their agenda to get the population down. And then you got the famine and the solution for the famine. I mean, sorry, you got the pestilence and the solution for the pestilence that who knows if that's going to take and sterilize who knows what's going to happen? Kill cells, kill sperm. Who knows? 
I got to say it like that, all right? Because, again, if you if you if you have any kind of if you have wisdom now, then you understand what your brother is saying. Okay, you clearly understand what I'm talking about. If you have wisdom, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, please seek wisdom from Elohim, and then come back and listen to the video again, so that you might get a proper understanding. Okay, please. I don't want you left behind. I don't want you deceived. I don't want you to think that you're doing right. Again, Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right. See, some of you people are sincere. I get it. Some of you, my brothers, some of my sisters, some of you all out there, you are sincere with your convictions. I know you're sincere. I know you don't have any hatred in your heart. Well, uh, yes, you do. But I think you, you, you have hatred in your heart because if you won't study it out for yourself, then that means you hate the word. So you do have hatred in your heart. You just don't know it because you're, you're because you you you've been giving over to a strong delusion that you believe in your own lies. Now it's called a reprobated mind. That's why again, when Solomon said, "There's a way that might seem right to a man, but that way is going to lead that man or woman to to their own demise, their own destruction." How did they say right here? It says, "And then as travail upon a woman, and then and they shall not escape." For they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction is going to come. See, that's the, that's the self-deception. That's the self, that's the disillusionment that a lot of you guys are dealing with right now. I'm talking about you all who are having a hard time, you know, following along with the truth. You're being, you're being led astray by your own selfishness. You're being led astray by your own righteousness. Again, there's a way that seems right. See, you think you're right. You're sincere, probably. That may be a better word. You're sincere about what you're saying. But there's a saying, there's a word, there's a saying that goes like this. They're sincere, but they're sincerely wrong. Let me say it to you again. Yes, you're sincere about your particular beliefs, your personal opinion. You're sincere about it, but you are sincerely wrong. If your opinion does not line up with the word of Elohim, you, again, are sincere, but sincerely wrong. If you profess to be a lover of Yah, but you are disagreeing with some of the things that are written in the book, then in all of your love, your love, and all of your sincerity, you are still absolutely wrong. Because in this book of life you don't you're not given a choice yeah you're given a choice to, to, to obey or not obey but you're not given a choice to say whether or not it's right or whether or not it's wrong your word is true that's what the book says let your word be true and every man be a liar amen we've all heard that your word is true and let your word if it conflicts with his word, let's make you the liar. Because either you're lying or Yah is lying. And I got news for you. The thing that created you is never going to be worse than you are. Let me say that again. Yah who created you, you're never going to be better than him. See, Satan, some of your fathers, that's what he wanted to do. The Bible says he wanted to elevate his throne above the thrones of heaven so that he could sit, you know, as Elohim. And what happened? Yah cast his ass out. So that the same sin that many of you are committing is the same rebellion that he committed. He's going to be like the Most High. Why not? You follow me? He could do it, I could do it. In other words, I don't, I don't have to believe it just because it's written in the Bible. Man, think about that. That's what some of you are saying. Some of the people you know, some of your religious friends and family members. I don't have to believe it because it's written in the Bible. The white man wrote the Bible. He wish he could write a Bible, about, a, a book about us. First of all, he don't love us enough to write nothing about us. Don't y'all know that? Well, I would say you want to give a history about us that would free us from all of his dominion. He would have never written a book about us. Hell no. All he did is he stole our identity out of the book and applied it to his kind and told us that we weren't written in this book. 
that we were to be slaves and that their job was to come and to, 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 to civilize the heathens. And if we listened to them when we died, then we could have the life that they have while they're here. No, he stole your identity just like he stole your book. So he had nothing to do with writing. He wouldn't have written it. it, it he would not have written it. Because it's not about him. It's about you. It is y'all talking to us, our people. So, again, if anybody challenges it, I just gave you a, the, the best rebuttal I could have given you. Just quote to them what I just said. And then if they don't want to receive it, dust the feet. In other words, leave them alone. Let them go on about their business. What the hell? At least you're not guilty of not telling them. Remember what we read about the prophet? That if you told them, even if they didn't listen, they were still going to go to hell for not listening, but your soul would be saved. But if you didn't tell them and you knew the truth, like some of us giving you uncomfortable truths, if we didn't say it, we'd go to hell and you still go to hell. We just watch each other going to hell. I'm not interested in that. So therefore, I'm going to give you the truth. But that's what he said. If, if I don't tell you, I'm going to hell with you. But if I tell you and you don't believe, you're going to hell on your own. But if I tell you and you believe, then your soul is saved as my soul is saved. Amen? Praise y'all. Well, let me get over to Cain and Abel, okay? Because uh, I don't know how much time I got left. I I've got so many videos tied up into my memory uh, chip, I think, whatever you call this thing, that I I'm afraid it might cut off on me, so... Let's get over. In, in, the, in the study on, on Cain and Abel, it's not going to be very long, sisters and brothers, okay? Because it really just cuts to the chase on what happens when, when, when you're blessed, but you can't get out of your own selfish ways. When you're blessed and you won't, you're not willing to open up and do what is right. When you're blessed, but you refuse to hearken to the directions of Elohim. What happens? Well, here's what happened with two brothers. Now, we were all told the Genesis story of Cain and Abel. And I don't have the time to go through all of that outside of one gave a sacrifice that was acceptable. The other gave a sacrifice that wasn't acceptable. We were lied to, some of us, in religion that the reason why Cain's offering was rejected because Yah required a blood sacrifice. And Cain didn't bring a blood sacrifice. He brought from his vegetables. And that was unacceptable. That's a lie. But the reason they had to tell that lie. Because they had to go back to the lamb that was slaughtered in the garden. Because see that's the white Jesus story. You know. you know, The lamb of, of, of using that word God. Who take away the sins of the world. How is that not Catholicism? That is a part of the rosary. See that's the lie they put in Genesis. By telling you that Elohim had to kill an innocent lamb. To clothe Adam and Eve. Because they told him they were naked. And he loved them so much. He didn't want them naked outside in the cold. Yet they've been outside in the cold. Oh, It wasn't any goddamn on cold by the way. They were in paradise. What kind of damn cold paradise have that man. Who's been there naked for who knows how long. <laughs> now all of a sudden he can't endure it. The book don't even talk about them being naked. If you go to Jasher. But see Genesis tell that story. Because that Catholic church, they're all about nakedness because they're all about pedophiles. Look at the angels and stuff in their cathedrals. Everything up there is naked. Little babies naked. So-called, you know, Caesar Begora pretending to be Yeshua is on the cross with a damn piece of rag tied around him. In essence, naked. All about nakedness with them. But anyway, they tell the story that he had, that Elohim had to kill two, had to kill two innocent lambs and, and to cover them, cover their shame. See, that's how they threw white Jesus in the mix with us. But the truth of it, that is not a true story. That's a Catholicism story. There was no lambs killed. Why would Yah kill the innocent for the guilty? That's not, that's unjust. You don't remember the story of Abraham? When Abraham asked those angels, he said, well, Yah is just. When he killed the righteous because of the sins of the wicked, you know what those angels told Abraham? No, he would not do that. And if you remember the story, this is when those angels was going to Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And Abraham started with 50 and 45. He said, what if there are 45 righteous or 40 righteous, 30 righteous people, 10 righteous people? Would Elohim destroy the righteous with the wicked? And they told him, absolutely not. And guess what? When they got there, the only one that was halfway righteous was Lot and his daughters. That's why they escaped. Even like Lot's wife, who couldn't get out of her own lust and her own desire, her own comfortableness with the life she was living, not the new life that Yah was trying to give them, to take them away from a life that was corrupted. Even she didn't get out. But remember the story I had ended? He said he would never destroy the righteous for the wicked. So why would he kill an innocent lamb for two wicked human beings? He wouldn't have done it. That's not the nature of Elohim. That's the nature of man. The nature of man preys upon innocence. Satan, his seed, that's what he preys upon. He preys upon a P-R-E-Y-S. <coughs> he preys upon innocence. That's why we shouldn't be ignorant of his devices, as you heard me say earlier. That's why I have to take some time every now and then and clarify myself, because I know he will prey on some of the innocence of some of you out there who are misallowing him to give you misinformation based off of what your brother is saying to you. That's why I take the little time to clarify. Not justify, clarify. I mean, I'm not interested. Y'all word don't need my justification. Y'all word is forever established in the heavens. But that being said, the Cain and Abel situation was, was, was not about what kind of, I mean, vegetables, fruits, or whatever you want to call it, versus meat. And let me, let, let me get into this for you, okay? Praise Yah. Woo. Hallelujah. Okay. Joshua chapter 1. Woo. He says, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 12. And Elohim drove them that day from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which they were taken. And they went and they dwelt at the east of the Garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife, and she bore two sons and three daughters. Remember that? Amen. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession of land. See, these, a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. All right? That's, that, was, that started in the beginning. It's still going on now. Praise Yah. Or it still should be going on to Yachan. So, again, as we talk about these last days, that don't mean quit your job, sisters and brothers. That don't mean go hide in a cave. Yah say, stay busy till he comes. He's going to get you out of this mess. Some of us are going to be on our jobs, and Yah is going to send us somewhere, and then something's going to happen right there in that spot. Some of us are going to be in the supermarket, and Yah is going to put some thought, or somebody's going to call your name. You're going to get a phone call. Something's going to happen, and you're going you're gonna to go take that, and something's going to happen to them. Amen? So you don't have to worry about that. Still proceed on what you're doing, but be prepared. Expect it to happen at any time. That's why you don't have time to be in, in doubt and self-righteousness. Amen? But anyway, the boys grew up, chapter verse 14. The boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession of land. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. In other words, he was a farmer. And Abe was a keeper of the sheep. He was a shepherd. All right? He was a cattleman, for lack of a better word. One was, was, a, was a farmer, the other one was a cattleman. All right? And, in, 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 and it was at the expiration of a few years that they brought the approximating offering to Elohim. You know, they brought what was required. And Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And Elohim turned and inclined to Abel and his offering, and fire came down from Elohim and consumed it. So he said, when y'all looked at it, he said, okay, this is pleasing. This is good. And unto Cain and his offering, the Lord did not. Elohim did, did not turn. And he did not incline to it. For he had brought. Now check this out. This, this is what I want you to listen to carefully. Verse 16. And unto Cain and his offering, Elohim did not turn. Otherwise, he did not face it. He looked the other way. And we told you that when someone brings sin to you, you should be looking the other way. When they bring folly to you, lying to you, entrapment, enticement, you should look the other way. See, Yah turned his head from the offering of Cain. But here's why he turned his head. And unto Cain, to, and to Cain offering that Elohim turned, and he was not inclined to take it. 
for he brought from the inferior fruit of the ground before Elohim and came with jealousy against his brother Abel on account of this. And he sought a reason to kill him. Did you catch that? It wasn't that Yah didn't want the fruit of the ground. Yah didn't have no problem with cucumbers and watermelon and pumpkins and, you know, sweet peas and, you know, potatoes. You know, uh, what else? Cabbage and greens. Elohim didn't have any problem with any of that. What he had a problem with is that Cain in his selfishness decided to give Elohim rotten stuff. Rotten stuff, inferior. You ever go to the market and you see inferior produce? When you go look up, you go to a Walmart and you look at maybe strawberry, you see mold on the strawberries. Or you see the tomato and the tomato has a little soft spot. That's called inferior product. See what Cain did, instead of him bringing the best of what he had, he brought inferior stuff. That's why Yah rejected it. So that's why we have to bring forth the truth. You see, when we start compromising the word of Elohim and start telling you what you want to hear, talking about us teachers, us watchmen and women, then that's the same thing as us bringing inferior fruit before Elohim. And Elohim is going to reject us for bringing that fruit. We're going to be judged for bringing that inferior truth. And for all of you who think you can go the way you want to go, you're bringing inferior fruit. When you lean to your own understanding, brothers and sisters, when you decide to do it your way, regardless of Yah's way, what you're doing is bringing inferior fruit to Elohim. When you come to him in religion, with your religious customs, when you're, when, when, with your religious idolatry, or ideology, whatever one you want to call it, Yah's going to reject you because that's inferior. He wants what Abel brought, something that was of the best. What's better than the word of Elohim? What is better than keeping the commandments of Elohim? You got it. Nothing. So if you want him to accept you, then you have to be obedient to his word if you want to be blessed. But if you decide to do it your own way, lean to your own understanding, go with what you feel good with versus what the word, the word of Elohim says, he is going to reject you and your inferior rationalization. Your self justification. He is going to reject you, reject you, sister. Sister, he's going to reject you. Yeah, you going to him. Cain went to Elohim. You're a believer. Cain was a believer. You bring in something. Cain brought something. But what you don't understand, sister, is what you're bringing is not what he asked you for. Brother, same thing applies. You can't go to Elohim any kind of way you want to go. You can't go your own way. That's what Solomon was trying to tell us when he said there's a way that seems right to a man. But that way will get that man destroyed. See, Cain was rejected because Cain wanted to do it his way. And not only did he want to do it his way, he wanted to compromise. He wanted to take, uh, what would you call this? <clears throat> what Cain wanted to do is that he wanted to just say, you know, he wanted to pick and choose. I'm going to keep the, I'm going to agree with what I agree with, and I'm going to reject what I don't agree with. See, he wanted to pick and choose. Elohim said, you don't get to pick and choose when it comes down to offering sacrifice to him. In other words, when it comes to you obeying the laws, commandments, and statutes of Elohim, you don't get to pick and choose, my sisters, my brothers. You don't get to pick and choose. There's only one way, straight and narrow path. That's it. And if that's not good, if that's not good enough for you, then you might as well turn away, because he's turning away from you. You might as well just go on back out in the world, eat, drink, and be happy, and be merry, because tomorrow your ass is going to die, and you're going to be judged. He's going to pull this all back up in front of you, and he's going to cash you out. You're going to have all your excuses. Well, I didn't know and I didn't think. I just didn't seem like that was right. How was that fair if a man can do it and a woman can? You're going to come with all of that shit. He's going to say, depart from me, you work of a wickedness. I never knew your ass. Same to you, brothers. Well, you know, I wanted to be an elder. You know, I'm a bishop. You know, I'm, I'm a man. I have liberties. I don't have to follow everything. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I do a lot, you know, for the people. I, you know, I work hard. You know, I, I'm out here in the community. You know, I'm a Freemason. And, you know, I, I, I do a lot of great things. You know, I hope Bill Church, he's going to get part from me, you wicked of, you, you work of wickedness. I never knew you. I never told you to build that. I never told you I wanted nothing made with the hands of man. I said I wanted you. You take that, 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 that offering made with the hands of man and you stick it up, you wreck them. Now, he's going to probably say it more vicious than I just said that, but, you know, I can be nice about it, can I? When he said his anger was kindled at Adam and Eve, remember that? When we read on a couple of days, he says anger was kindled. Oh, he could be a whole lot more brutal than your brother can be. I'm talking about, not, not brutal, abrasive. Y'all can be way more abrasive than DFG. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't caught Michelle Hammond's uh, latest message, sisters, go to her channel. Now, I'm going to tell you right on the front side, she is abrasive. <laughs> She's abrasive. But I'm going to tell you something. She's going to tell you the truth that if a man tried to tell you that truth, all hell would break loose. But, but you know, I'm going to tell you something. No man should be afraid to tell it to you. I know I'm not afraid to tell it to you, any truth that Yah tells me. But I'm just saying, you know, because a lot of you, you get in your feelings about these things you don't agree with. And when a man brings it out, you accuse him of, of, of falsely identifying Yah's purpose and plan for your life. I'm going to say that again. When a man brings forth certain truths to some of you sisters, you falsely accuse him of trying to interfere with what is your destiny or your purpose for your life. And if that man is sent to you by Elohim, then you are sadly mistaken. You are falsely accusing and falsely judging these men. So since you won't hear from the brothers, maybe you'll hear from one of your own. A, 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 you know, I mean, one of the sisters. One of your gender. Amen? So I'm just saying, go check out our channel, Michelle Hammond. You'll find her over there. But I'm going to tell you one thing, it ain't for the weak. And, and I'm going to tell you something, and if you already got your mind made up about the subject that she's talking about, don't bother to go over there. All right? Don't even bother. Just keep on down the path that you're going down, and you and y'all can settle that up at judgment. All right? That, that's all I can say about that. But I'm going to tell you something. None of us have the right to compromise the word of Elohim. None of us have a right to take the word of Elohim and twist it. To make it mean what we want it to mean. None of us have a right to take the word and use it to our own personal interpretation. And then lie when the, when the messengers come and accuse them of, of twisting the word and using their own interpretation when they're giving it to you from the book. And many of you are just too damn lazy to go and check for yourself. You used to having these preachers and the, these pastors and bishops, whatever the hell they call themselves, to tell you what you want to hear instead of telling you what you need to hear. And I'm telling you what you need to hear that's going to be the saving of your soul. Satan will always tell you what you want to hear. He's the ultimate people pleaser. And that's what many of you have become. People pleasers. Or you seek after people pleasers. Tell me something soft. Tell me something comfortable. Tell me something that's going to make me feel good. Tell me something expiring, inspiring. Look, the truth, if the truth can't do those things for you, then, then trust me, you got some real issues. The truth is all the inspiration that you need. Amen? That's all you need is the truth. But the truth story here is that Cain and Abel fight wasn't about y'all rejecting one because he wanted meat versus he wanting fruit. It was because one gave him something good. The best that he could get, he gave the, his best self to Elohim. And the other was giving his, 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 the stuff he didn't want. Inferior stuff. One was walking upright and the other one was walking the way he wanted to walk. One was walking upright and the other one was walking the way she wanted to walk. And both of them thought they could walk before Elohim and that would be acceptable. And y'all made it clear, it's not acceptable. You come to me the way I say you come. Not the way you want to come. So that's a lie of religion. Come, the, you know, the Bible said, you know, come as you are. Where is that in the scripture? Come as you are. Yeah, has never said anything like that. He said, my people who are called by my name, you know, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's not coming as you are. Then I would heal their land. 
Then I will return them back to me. That's not coming as you are. Y'all said there's a standard that you got to meet before you come to him. There is a clear expectation that you have to meet before you come to Elohim. And the first is to repent and the second is to submit. The first is to repent. The second is to submit yourself unto Elohim. Submit means obey it whether you agree with it or not. There is no other way to come. Any other way is like a thief. You're a robber. You're trying to come in through the windows and through the back door. You're going to come in an inferior way. He's going to turn his head and reject you just like he turned his head from Cain and reject Cain. If you don't come as able, able, righteous in an obedient way, then you will not be accepted at all. If you don't come righteous and come obedient, you will not be accepted. So you're wasting your time. You can go all your religion, all you want. You can be as religious as you want to be. Go witness. You can do whatever you want to do. Yah does not hear any damn thing you're saying and he ain't looking at any damn thing you're doing. As he said again with Cain, he just turned his head. Yeah, you're talking, but I ain't hearing you. Yeah, you're there, but I ain't seeing you. Is that clear enough for you? Is that clear enough for you? See, we're trying to save souls here. We're trying to turn the people back to Elohim here. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're interested in. We're not interested in your religious ideology. Making you feel good about yourself. Shit. What is good about any of us? But all this shit that's going on. All this lies and thieving and, and debauchery and abominable things that's going on. That we're looking at and many of us not saying anything about. Some of us even participating in. What is it good about us? That we need to be so proud of. Praise Yah. Let me get on back in there so we can get this thing wrapped up. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. And the Cain and his offering to the Lord did Elohim turn, and he, did, and he did not incline to it, for he had brought from him the inferior fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel. See, that's what it is right now. A lot of you so-called believers are jealous of some of us out here because we're bringing forth the truth, and that truth don't line up with what you wanted to say, so you're angry at us. But you won't tell us you're angry. You just say, well, I ain't angry. I just don't agree. Whatever. Tell yourself any lie you want to believe. We know the truth. Y'all know the truth. He goes on to say, and, and, and then sometime after, Cain and Abel, his brother, went one day in the field to do their work. And they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing to his ground, Abel feeding his flock, and the flock passed that part which Cain had plowed in the ground, and it sorely grieved Cain on this account. So now what you have happening, they're both out there working, but now some of the sheep from Abel goes over to the area that Cain just got finished plowing. Now if you know anything about plowing ground, if something tramples where you plowed, it's going to make you have to go back and plow it again. They are, he's plowing because remember, he is a farmer. He's planting seeds. So if your sheep is over there on his ground where he's plowed, you're messing the ground up. So of course he's going to be angry about that. Because he's going to now got to go back and do this all over again. Keep your sheep over there where they're supposed to be. I'm not over there messing with your sheep. Keep your sheep from over here messing with my, my, my fruit. See, that's what the dispute was about. At least we it led to death. It goes on to read. And, a, and Cain approached his brother Abel in anger. And he said unto him, What is there between me and you? That thou comest to dwell and bring your flock to feed in my land. He's like, what is your problem? Why you got to come over here messing with me? You don't have enough area over there? From what I can see, you got more than enough room for your sheep. Why are you not keeping your sheep over there where they're supposed to be? That's why y'all tell us we got he's gonna separate the sheep from the goat. That's why he said, come out from among them. Be you separate. 
Don't touch the, any, the unclean things. Any man that loves this world or the things of the world, the love of Elohim is not in him. See, there's a direct separation between us and wickedness, us and the heathen. And you see a classic example of it going on right here. Now, Abel should have, should have not brought his sheep over there. He already knew the man was mad. He said, that's some of us. You, you, you're not supposed to provoke your brothers and sisters to anger. But in Judah and Israel, we are, we are perfectionists at that. I mean, we, you know, we'll talk about each other, talk behind each other's backs, lie, betray each other. We do just about anything to one another. We do things to each other we would never do to so-called white people or, or Arabs or, or Asians. We would never do some of the things that we do to each other to them. But see, here's Abel, a perfect example of arrogance. Like many of us, you hate the brother that you see, but you claim to love Elohim that you don't see. You want to, when, when we come to you and say, love your brother, uh, he ain't my brother. But then when we come and tell you that, 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 that Yahuwah loves us only, oh no, he loves everybody. When we tell you that, that he is a man of color, oh, he don't have no color. See, so you're just like Abel. Because you see, Abel got it called himself right. Yeah, he brought the right offering, but he had the wrong attitude. Because his attitude, now nah, he's better than everybody. So he can do whatever the hell he wants to do. So that's what those Hebrew Israelites who are on those corners talking shit to everybody. See, that's wickedness. That's wickedness. And that's no different than this. So they're maintaining and staying in their in their realm. Amongst their own kind, doing what they're supposed to be doing, many of us are distracted and we're out there with these heathens doing exactly what we shouldn't be doing. Amen? So now Cain is just. If you were Cain, tell me you're not going to be pissed. Now, first of all, you got rejected. He didn't. All right? And it made you feel some kind of way about it. Okay. You were wrong. You should have gave Elohim your best. But okay, but now instead of him being satisfied, talking about Abel and leaving you alone, see our book tells don't provoke your brothers to jealousy. Our book tells us that love your neighbor as yourself. Father, do not provoke your sons to jealousy. Same thing, daughter, don't provoke your mother. Mother, don't provoke your daughters. See, that's exactly what Abel did when he did not manage what Yah gave him to manage. His sheep. And now it's causing problems for his brother. And now his brother is angry. But watch, now you would think that Abel, you know, since we were taught he was so righteous, which I'm not, I didn't read this in here. I, it's, 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 his offering was appropriate, but I ain't reading about he was so righteous. It says, Abel answered Cain and said unto him, What is there between me and you, that thou shalt eat the flesh of my flock and clothe yourself with their wool? So he said, well, I don't know why you complaining. You know, you, you, the clothes you got on, they came from my sheep. The meat you got on your table came from my sheep. Now, I bet you five to one, you know, he didn't say he didn't pay for it. I suspect that, that, that Cain gave him fruit. They were bartering. They were trading with each other. Okay? But, now that is my opinion. And now, therefore, put off the wool of my sheep where thou hast closed yourself and give me money for the for the for their fruit and flesh which thou hast eaten and when thou shalt have done this I will then go from my land as you have said now what he's saying now he to provoke this fight and the guy saying look why are you over here messing with me see again some of you brothers some of you sisters y'all need to refrain from evil when evils when someone warns you to leave them alone you need to leave them alone but some of you, you can't help yourself. You're just going to poke and poke and poke. And when shit hits the fan, then all of a sudden, you know, you got to deal with the consequences. Now, this is what's happening right here. And instead of Abel just taking his sheep back where they're supposed to be, he going to go and tell the man, well, I ain't doing nothing until you give me money for them clothes you got. I ain't doing nothing until you give me So now, you see what I'm saying here? Now there's contention going on. Instead of them figuring out how to reason between each other, all they can see is who's right and who's wrong. 
instead of one of them taking wrong. See, the righteous among us, we learn to take wrong when it comes down to our brother. That don't mean we got to be in agreement. That just simply means that, look, I'm not going to fight you behind this. Okay, if that's the way you're going to be, that's how you feel about it, go ahead about your business. I'm good. If you don't want me to have it and I got to continue to ask you for it, then you keep it. All right? That's, that's the mindset that they should have had. At least, you know, one of the two, but neither one of them were exercising any kind of discipline. They were not loving each other. Again, not unlike how we are right now. Again, envy, jealous, strife, greed, bitterness, hatred, murder, lovers of evil more than lovers of Elohim. Same way, nothing changed, nothing new under the sun. Same situation. Different circumstances. Verse 21. And Cain said to Abel, his brother, Surely I will kill your ass, and who will require the blood of me if I do? In other words, he's saying, if you don't stop, you're about to get hurt, my friend. See, a lot of you sisters, that's something I'm going to say to you. A lot of you ladies out there, you got these wicked ass men, you know these men don't have any self-discipline, you know they're violent, you know they're hostile, and some of you will provoke these men, and then when something happens, you know, you're screaming and hollering and it's too late. So you need to learn discretion, prudence. You need to know when it's time to say, okay, I'm shutting this down. Okay, all right, okay, no problem. And brothers, you need to learn that with each other. Because a lot of you guys need to learn how to just take wrong. And just say, okay, bro, all right, don't worry about it. There ain't, ain't going to be no fight between me and you. We ain't nobody going to get killed behind you know, somebody getting in front of them in a line. Ain't nobody going to get killed behind no Popeye's chicken sandwich. But we don't use that kind of discretion. We're just as bad as these two brothers were. And next thing you know, somebody threatening somebody. Tell me these not our people. Tell me we are not the people of the book. That's not our behavior. Same thing with you sisters. Remember two sisters, the young ladies, getting into a fight about who's going to clean the room. One go grabs a knife, going to stab the other one, and then she gets shot down like a dog in the street by the police. Why? Because she didn't know how to just say, we ain't going to fight about this. Sometimes you just got to learn how to just say, you know what, be the, be, 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 you know, be the bigger of the two, as they say. You just got to say, look, okay, no problem. Don't worry about it. You keep it. I don't want it. I'm out of here. I'm out. I'm gone. And I'm not going to do no vengeful shit behind you either. I'm just gone. You won't be able to take advantage of me no more. That would have been better had Abel said that. But no, he wanted to get in there. Well, I ain't doing nothing until you pay me for this and you pay me for that. Although Abel's in the wrong. Because why didn't he ask for these things prior to that? He's going to wait till he's in the wrong and then try to justify his wrong with more wrong. That's how many of our people are. Instead of admitting you wrong, you're going to try to flip the script. So you're accepting your wrong, you start pointing fingers. When you get caught in your wrong, then you want to point the finger at the other person. What they call that gunny sacking. Now you want to tell them about all the shit they did. But why didn't you tell them all that before they angered you if you were so righteous? If what they had done was so grievous to you, why didn't you tell them that when you were not angry? Why do you have to get angry then all of a sudden start throwing up all of your, your bitterness on them? Brothers, this applies to you too. If you're unhappy with your sister, your woman, why don't you tell her you know, if, not unhappy, but if she does something that's not meeting your expectations, why don't you say it to her calmly? Sister, no, we don't operate like that. Instead of not saying anything, and then, I'm tired of this. I ain't taking this no more. I, I'm going to beat your ass. Or I'm leaving. See, you're wrong. You're wrong. You should have brought that up at the moment there was a dispute. In the moment that there was a disagreement between the two of you guys, if you felt that it was, it, it was something that would be bothersome, sisters, you too, that should have come up right then at that time, and y'all should have had a discussion about it, and one of y'all should have said, okay, either we're going to agree, and if we're not going to agree, then we're going to agree to disagree, and we're still going to have peace. Let me say that again. We're going to agree to disagree so we can still have peace. Amen? In other words, you don't have to be right for me to be wrong. We just don't see it the same way. Amen? But that don't mean self-justification. So don't twist what I said and come bring that back to the word. I'm talking about in human 
you know, material disagreements, arguments amongst you, life arguments, not the word. You don't debate the word of Elohim. You study it out to learn. And I have to be, again, clear with that because I know Satan will jump in and then pause in the minds of someone of you listeners out there and you'll twist it again. Even though I forewarned you not to let him do that to us. Amen. But we need to learn how to walk peacefully amongst one another, even if we don't agree. And if you owe somebody something, you need to pay what you owe, brothers. A lot of you guys, you go and you borrow something and then you don't pay it back. When somebody come and ask for it and they got to, they, they, they're, they're upset because you haven't paid them on time. You want to say, well, you should have knew that before you lent that to me. Or you need to be more patient. They don't have to be more patient with you. If you gave your word, keep your word. Did you tell them that when you asked for the help? That, hey, by the way, you'll get it whenever I get ready to give it back? Or did you tell them, I'm going to give it back to you on payday Friday? I'm going to give it back to you on tomorrow? I'm going to give it back to you, you know, when I start working again. Whatever you may have said, including your land loss or any other debt that you owe. Any debtor that you owe, that ought to be your attitude. You pay your debt, you pay your bills. That's righteousness. Y'all say we operate with a level scale. And while I'm thinking about it, we don't sue somebody because the heathens sue them. We don't act like the heathens. We're an example for the heathens to follow. They're not our example. Although, <laughs> for many of us, they are. Let's back to the book. And we're almost done. Praise Yah. So they're going to tell now take off the clothes and, that you got from my sheep and all of this kind of carrying on. This is, this is Abel. This ain't Cain talking. This is Abel talking like that. Old righteous Abel that we were told. Look at his attitude. Now he just got, all the man said is get your sheep and bring your sheep back on your land because they're messing up my work, and I'm, I'm tired, and, and I can't keep on redoing this. Take your sheep and bring them back over there. No, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing nothing until you pay me, take off them clothes. I how many men, oh boy, praise y'all. Sisters, how many men you know like that? You know, they'll buy you something nice, give you something nice, and when they get mad, I want my shit back. Give me my, give me, the, give me my rings back. Give me my coat back. Give me my shoes back. Give me my car back. We used to call that Indian giving when we were kids. See, that's, that's the unrighteousness that's in you, brothers. If you gave someone something, you gave that to your woman, that's hers whether you stay or leave. So it's the same thing applies to you, I might add. Because you're just as bad too. I want my this back. I want my that back. I want, you know what I'm saying? You're just as wicked as Abel's been when you do that. If you give somebody a gift, that gift belongs to them. Once they take that gift, it's theirs. It's no longer yours. I don't care if you did buy it. If you didn't want to give it to them, you shouldn't have gave it. If you give it to them, if you gave them those gifts conditionally, then you're unrighteous. You don't give un, 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 uh, gifts conditionally. That's called manipulation. If you got something to give to them, you give it to them, and it's theirs. Amen? If they misuse it or they misuse you after they got it, let y'all judge them. Trust me. When y'all finish with their ass, you know, they gonna, he going to put more pain on them than you could ever pull by just taking something back. That just makes you unrighteous. That's what Abel is here. I hope you're getting some lessons out of this, sisters and brothers. I know I am. Therefore, put off the clothes of, of my sheep, which thou hast clothed yourself, and give me the money for the fruit and the flesh which you have eaten. And when you have done this, I will then go from that land as you have said. And Cain said to his brother, Abel, I'm going to kill you this day. And who's going to require my blood? You can call anybody you want to kill. I'm going to kill your ass. I'm sick of you. And Abel answered Cain saying, Surely Elohim who has made us in the earth will avenge my cause. And he will require my blood from, from thee should thou slay me. See, now they want to call. See, that's the same as many of our people. You know, you want to do dirty shit, then you want to cook, talk about, you know, God got me. God got my back. God know my heart. Using your word God, I'm using God intentionally. God know my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart is wicked above all things. Evil. See, that's the same game Abel is playing here now. He's doing unrighteousness, but then he want to act like somehow or another, you know, uh, you know, because he's a believer, God is okay with it. No, y'all said whatever man sows his ass is going to reap. 
You sow wickedness, you're going to reap wickedness. Be not deceived. Elohim is not mocked. Whatever man sow, he's going to reap. Y'all say you take your husband to court or you let somebody take you to court. You don't do what you're both doing. You end up in court. Whatever that judge decides, that's your consequence. So you best be stay out of there. Don't do anything to be going is what I'm saying. If you can avoid it. And Abel answered Cain saying, Surely Elohim has made us in this earth, and he will avenge my cause, and will require thy blood should thou slay me. For Elohim is the judge uh, and the arbit arbitrator. And he will require, require the man, or he will avenge a man according to this evil, or his evil, and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon the earth. Now he ain't lying about that. Amen? He ain't lying about that. Yah is going to require... Your, your blood on your wicked ass hands, sisters and brothers. That's why I say you better, you guys out here who are challenging the word, doing what you want to do, y'all going to hold you accountable for it, just so you know. You're not going to get away with it. You might have got away with it today, but the day you die, the day of judgment, he's going to confront you with that. And you're going to be hollering and screaming. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to be saying, get out of here. I don't want to hear nothing from you. You worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. And Cain heard the words of Abel, his brother, and his anger, and it, and, and it angered Cain. And it, he was, and his anger was kindled against his brother Abel for, for clearing this thing. And Cain hastened, rose up, took an iron part of the plowing instrument, which he suddenly hit his brother and killed him. And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth, and the blood of Abel screamed up into the earth before the flock. Or steamed up, I'm sorry. And after this, Cain repented. Uh-oh. See, that's why you shouldn't let your emotions get the best of you, sisters and brothers. Because <coughs> some of you guys, you know, you let yourself go too far when you get angry. Because look here. See, you weren't taught the truth. See, the truth of it is that Abel provoked it. Cain overreacted. Abel got killed. And now Cain is in regret for doing what he did. That's why you need to think about, how do you say, think before you act, sisters and brothers? You better try to weigh the consequences of your decision before you make that decision. Because now you're looking at Cain, not Abel. Cain is upset that he killed his brother. He's repenting of it now. Oh my goodness, what did I do? Oh, I can't believe I killed my brother. I killed my friend. I killed my husband. I killed my woman. I murdered my child. I murdered my mom, my dad. I was drinking and driving. And I got drunk. I fell asleep and I killed my best friend. I was doing drugs and I shouldn't have been doing these drugs. And now my friend is over on the drugs I gave him or her. Oh, there's many times this kind of thing happened amongst Israel. This is the first time, but it surely wasn't the last time. And I give you these examples so that you can have something to weigh your decisions on, my sisters and my brothers. Amen? That's why I present these truths to you. Or at least Elohim through me presenting it to you as a watchman. Amen? And Cain, after, have, after repenting of having slain his brother, he was sadly grieved and he cried. And he was he was so, so, so upset. He said he had vexed him exceedingly. You know what vexation is? Oh, he couldn't get it off his mind what he had done. Cain, not Abel, guys. That's why you got to resist the devil. See, if, if Cain had, had, had been walking the way he should have walked before Elohim, instead of giving Elohim inferior like many of you doing, compromising yourself, halfway in the truth, halfway out of the truth, doing the truth you want to way the way you want to do it, Instead of doing it the right way. See maybe Cain would have been able. To resist the murdering. Of his own brother. And this is what's happening. A lot of things that are happening to us. That are happening to you. Not necessarily you getting killed. But a lot of evil in your house. Is because you've compromised yourself sister. A lot of evil that is happening in your homes. Is because you've compromised yourself my brother. Some of you are losing your jobs. Some of you are losing your houses. Some of you are. 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 are, are, are being faced with eviction. Some of you are being faced with hunger. Some of you are exceedingly sick. 
You have breast cancer, ovarian cancer, because you refuse to follow the dietary laws. Some of you have colon cancer, liver disease. Some of you are becoming diabetics because you refuse to, fi fo to follow the dietary laws. You want to eat what you want to eat. That's no judgment against you. It's a warning to you. I love you. That's why I tell you these things. And now you're reaping the consequences of your rebellion. So that rebellion in Cain's case was that he half ass did it when he should have did it with all of his heart, his mind, and his rahu. He should have served Yah completely. But no, he wanted to give him inferior. I'm going to do it my way. Like so many of you brothers, you want to walk before Elohim your way. And Yah saying, I reject your way. As he rejected Cain. And now look what Cain has done. Now he's crying. He's upset. He's sad. He's regretful. But ain't nothing he can do to change it. And that's what we see now. How many mothers out there crying right now? And I'm going to stop the story right there. You can pick it up from there. Because that, that's the meat of what I wanted to share. As we, as we bring closure to this message. How many of you mothers right now are grieving. Or have grieved over a son that was murdered in these streets? You saw what he was doing when he was a kid. You didn't chastise him. You gave him whatever you wanted. Some of you even encouraged him to go out there and hustle. Man got to do what a man got to do. Man take care of his family. Whatever man got to do to take care of his family, that's what he should be doing. Some of you encouraged your sons to be little drug dealers. And then when somebody blew their brains out, you're the first one weeping and crying, talking about, oh, my baby, my baby, my baby. You go bring them into some old hellhole called a place where you're holding these ceremonies over that dead corpse. Talking about, you know, Elohim knew his heart. He did know his heart. And he judged them because of his heart. Yeah, he judged them because of his heart. You're right. He knew his heart. See, Yah saw him as he truly saw, should have been seen. Not, as the way, not in the way that you wanted to see him. You can lie all you want. You can make it up. You can tell all these great stories about some of the nice thing he did. Go ask some of the other mothers that he probably killed and murdered. Go ask some of these other mothers whose children are hooked on drugs because your son sold them the drugs. And I don't hear no shit about, you know, your son didn't put the drugs in the community. Hell, all of us were in communities with drugs. I ain't never sold no damn drugs to nobody. And if you have, and some of you may have. I'm not judging you. Hopefully you don't do it anymore and you repent it. Remember I said earlier, y'all will forgive you. Except if you blaspheme the word. If you want to fight against this, you're on your own. But if you're willing to submit and subject yourself to what this says, then Yah will help you. He will redeem you. He will accept your sacrifice. Because you're giving him your all. Not just what you want to give based off of what you agree upon. And same thing with you. A lot of you, you brothers out here. Your mothers. I'm saying your fathers. Your daughters are whores. Tramps in an abusive relationship with some man who beats her ass like a drum. Out here selling her ass on the street for pennies on a dollar. Hooked on every kind of drug you can think of. And when you was a little girl, what were you? Did you teach her how to pray? Did you teach her the importance of the word of Elohim? Did you even tell her who she was? Did you tell her that she was an Israelite daughter? The apple of Elohim's eye, did you tell her that? Did you tell her that you loved her, but you don't love her more than Elohim loves her? That you wish you could, but it ain't in you? For all the love that you have for her, that that is nowhere near the love that Elohim has for her. Therefore, she needs to remember that all the days of her life. Did you tell her that? Or did you bring her in some church and let these demons lie to her and tell her that y'all didn't care what she did? All y'all wanted her to do was to have the best life now. Did you? Did you raise your son to be hard? I'm not talking about be a, raising to be a man or a provider and a protector. No, I'm talking about hard. Or did you tell him that he had to love his brother? That he had to be a builder inside of his community? Because that's all we have as a people of Elohim. It's one another. Did you tell him that? Did you teach him how to pray? Better yet, did you practice Proverbs 22 and 6. Did you practice that, my brother? I'm asking you a serious question now. Did you practice that? 
He said, well, what is 22 and 6, DFG? Train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart. Did you do that? Train up a child in the ways of Elohim. That's the way he should go. That's the only way. That's the straight and narrow way. Did you train him up in the knowledge of Elohim? Or did you bring him to church and let some devil in a wolf in sheep clothing give him a sermon until he got bored and sick of going, sick of seeing y'all throw all y'all money to this man, and this man is constantly rich, and this boy don't even have shoes to wear to school. At least those fit to wear to school. Because y'all giving all y'all money to the preacher. And don't think that at some point he's going to grow up in resentment towards the preacher and you. And then you know what he's going to do? He's going to become a heathen because he's going to hate Elohim. Because he's not going to believe there's an Elohim. He's going to believe that he's a God to himself. Because you counted on a man to do the job that y'all called you to do, brother. And let me tell you something else, brothers. It's not too late. Especially if you still have, you know, children, sons, and daughters who are, not, you know, are still preteen. It's not too late. But you're going to have to get started right now if you have any chance of saving them before this doomsday event happens. Because it's about to come. Russia is talking about it. China talking about adding a laser to some damn missile that they have. Why would they want to add a, add a laser to a missile? Because they plan on shooting it at a target. And they don't want to miss. Oh, and by the way, that target is Babylon, the great so-called America. Go read Revelation chapter 18 if you want to know more about it. We're out of time. We need to get it right. We need to study to show ourselves approved. You know, Russia, the, the, the earth is crying out. It's saying we're at the end now. Fish are dying. Birds are dying. Water's polluted. Air is polluted. People are dying. How many more people does the pestilence have to kill before you to understand that we're at, uh, that, that we're at the end of time? All kind of non-creation uh, activities are being promoted. The family is, is, is not being promoted. As a matter of fact, the family is being spoken against. The nuclear family is what they call it. Men, wife, children. It, that's being pushed aside now. Because whoever these demons are, they plan to wipe us off the face of the earth as they get down to that 500,000. Oh yeah, your brother didn't forget where we started. We're going to end where we started. We always loop it back. The meat is in the middle, but the warning is in the end and the beginning. The alpha and the omega. Y'all say, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart, sister. Brother, don't harden your heart. Let your heart be a fleshly heart. In other words, let the word of Elohim come inside you now and rethink your position on things. Consider things maybe that you thought you would never consider. Not because someone is right and somebody is wrong. It's because the word of Elohim is true. And then like I am going to do. Let him lead me. And that's all I'm interested in doing. I'm not interested in what somebody says to my left and somebody says to my right. I'm interested in what Elohim says. And what he said is written in the book for my well-being. And that's what I'm going to believe. And if he commands me to do something, I'm doing what's in the book. Whatever that might be. Regardless. I don't care what anybody thinks about that. It's my soul. And I pray you feel the same way, sisters, brothers. But make sure that it's lined up, again, with the book. Not your own ways. That's inferior fruit. When you go before Elohim your own way, that's the same thing that Cain did that caused Cain to end up being a murderer. You're a thief, a robber, when you go before Elohim the way you want to go and not the way the word directs you to go. And for those of you who are going the right way, you need to practice what you learn. You need to practice what you preach. Abel was doing the right thing, but he was living the wrong way. He was going about the wrong way. He thought that just because he was a true believer, that was enough. But he was selfish and bitter. And he was jealous too, even though the book doesn't say it. He was jealous. He was a, he was a provoker. He was, he was a provocator. He was a shit starter. Although he was a believer. 
And that's why we have to constantly stay in prayer. Because all of us have the propensity to be like Abel. And when we act like Abel, regardless of how we are before Elohim, we're going to get yourself killed. You're going to die a spiritual death, if not a physical death, or both. Okay? That's the message tonight, today, this morning. Depending on when you're listening. Receive it. I bring this to an end. All right? I love you. That's why I'm bringing this to you. I feel a little bit better, I think. You know? Well, look at this. Look at me. This looks like somebody that does not care. This looks like somebody who's trying to hoodwink you, trying to trick you, trying to seduce you, trying to make you do something you don't want to do. This looks like that. I can wring this cap out in water. You see it dripping. Look at this. This is compassion for the people of Elohim, for my people. I don't care nothing about these heathen. They're going to do what they want to do. Yah's already judging them. They're dying like shit going through a goose out there. But unfortunately, we're dying too. Murder is happening. By Abel, Cain still killing Abel out here. And Abel has much to do with it as Cain does. That's the irony of it. So this is brother, stop. Stop while you still have a chance. Turn around. Repent. See, a lot of you guys are going to be like Cain. You're going to do it. It's going to be too late. Then you're going to be crying out, asking for forgiveness. And Yah says it's too late. The, the, the die has been cast. You have already thrown the die on their clothing. It's no cleaning that off those clothes now. See, that's a lot of you. Your, your, you know, your, your, your sins are going to find you out. And what's going to happen before you have a chance to repent, Yah going to come and he's going to take you off this earth. Many of our people, that's going to happen to. Because they think they got time. Or they think that they can play around with this. That, you know, well, I'm a believer, but, you know, you know, you know, I'm human. Okay. Abel was a believer. But Abel was a believer. All right. And look what it ended up happening. It still got his, he still got his ass killed because he wasn't walking with he thought. He should have walked in love towards Cain. But he wants to be provoking. Many of you, I'm a believer, but I'm human. Okay? I'm going to tell you, when something that happens to humans, they die. And many of them before their time. Okay? DFG? You know, Gideon's flight? The Ruhuk is telling me to say this prayer. I'm trying not to say it. But he tells me to say it, so I'm going to say it. Y'all bless you. Y'all protect you. May Yah Rahuk be all around you. May Yah give you mercy. May Yah give you grace. May, shine, may Yah shine his light. Yahuwah shine his light upon your continents. And may Yah give you peace and victory. More importantly, may Yah give you a conviction and a heart to serve him. Amen? DFG, talk to you soon. Bye now.